Oh man, okay, so uh, LG exists too. LG released the V40 Thin Q, which is a smartphone with five cameras on it. It does some things. It has some features. I don't really care about that. I wasn't gonna talk about that. I had 0% interest in this phone because it seemed incredibly average, a little bit higher price than it probably deserved. That's not what I wanna talk about today. You guys know if you like it or if you don't like it, whatever. What I want to talk about today is something that quite literally baffles me. That's that's the a perfect word for this situation because I seriously do not understand the LG Watch W7. W7 because there must have been six of these at some point. Not sure why they went W7, but this is a new smartwatch, a Wear OS smartwatch rather. Designed by LG, launched at the same time as the V40 Thin Q. They really gotta work on these names. And basically everything about this watch's existence confuses me. There's not a single lick of logic with it. I can't understand even remotely as to someone might be interested in this watch. So let's, let's talk about it. First of all, something you need to know no matter what I talk about during this video. This watch starts at $450. So already from the get-go, it's not really a cheap smartwatch. It's not an Apple Watch alternative because you have to pay extra to acquire the W7. And Apple Watch Series 4, that starts at $400. So overall, I don't want to compare this watch entirely to the Apple Watch because that's the number one watch in the world. That's very hard to beat. We should honestly just compare this to other Android smartwatches or the Galaxy Gear watches that Samsung makes. Regardless though, it's safe to say this is a pricier smartwatch than usual especially when it comes to Wear OS watches, which are usually much cheaper than Apple watches. This one isn't, okay? So $450. The gimmick here, the big standalone feature about the W7 that separates it from all other Wear OS watches out there is that it actually has physical hour and minute hands above on top of the glass touch display, which means yes, you cannot get rid of them. They are not part of the operating system, whether you're scrolling through messages, working on health apps, trying to use more digital style watch faces, those hands have to be there on the screen at all times. Not only are there hands, but there's actually a giant black dot in the center of the screen as well. So this, this is already confusing enough as it is. First of all, why? What's the advantage to using a physical hour and minute hand that physically move on top of a glass display? You know, our multi-touch displays, they're nice because you know, they're smooth. You can swipe over them. They're very easy to scroll through. It's a very simple concept to grasp. Somehow LG didn't really catch the fact that when you're swiping through watch faces or swiping through messages, swiping across a needle that's constantly moving throughout the day might feel a little bit unintuitive. And on top of that, like we have the LG V40, right? They have it built into the settings that you can turn off the notch on that phone if you don't want to, okay? So LG admits to some people out there, the notch might be a little bit intrusive. So we have a software workaround to try to erase that notch and make Make it harder to notice. Okay, so you care about things being intrusive, yet you were okay with putting an hour and minute hand in the front of the entire UI and not even changing the user interface of Wear OS in any real shape, way, or forms to accommodate these hands. Not saying that there was a good way to do it, but they simply just didn't even attempt one. So you got text messages that show up in the center of the screen. You have really, really bothersome images like this where you've got the weather at the top of the screen and it's being cut off because, as we've talked about in the past, having round displays mean cutting off a lot of your content unless you design it differently. They didn't try to design it differently. So you're cutting off the weather at the top of the watch. The hands are covering up the date. So you have a display that's trying to convey data, trying to convey information to you, but the own hardware of the device is covering up the data so you can't read. It just says February something at something AM. So why even have it be a smartwatch? Like, the argument they're trying to make with the normal hands being on top of the display is that even when the normal part of the smartwatch dies, so when that battery runs out, you will still have the hour and minute hands moving for up to 100 days after the regular smartwatch part of the watch dies. <sighs> okay, if you've never challenged thought before, if you've never tried to have a follow-up thought in your brain, you would think, oh, that's good because it will tell time without me having to charge it. But then, very simply, you can just add an 
extra thought on top of that process and go, well, wait a minute, you're spending $450 on a smartwatch. If you're paying for the smartwatch part of this device, why do you not care if you don't get to use any of those smartwatch capabilities for the next 100 days? If you just need something to tell time, there's probably $10, $20 watches, find on Amazon, find them on Walmart that will literally last you years without needing to be charged. You can find them waterproof, they can get little stopwatches built into them, but this design is conflicting because they're saying, buy this $450 watch because it can read your texts and stuff, but put up with these intrusive hands that you're constantly going to be swiping over and it's gonna be constantly covering up all the data on the smart side of the watch, but that's okay because when the smart part of the watch dies, the watch will keep working for another 100 days. This is a stupid idea. Sometimes it's not smart to merge two things that really shouldn't be merged. So we have smart watches and we have regular watches. I would have been fine if LG just released either one of those. If LG just wanted to make a very simple watch that just told time, maybe tapped you when you got a notification, maybe lit up when you got a text message and that was it, that would be great. That would be fine. You just wanted a basic minimal watch. It tells time, but it gives you a little bit of notification alerts. That would have been perfectly decent. No problems there. But when you start to try to merge the smartwatch type of device with the actual old fashioned watch that just tells time, you get this very, very awkward in between overpriced piece of junk. If I haven't convinced you this watch is crazy enough as it is, this watch doesn't even have the latest Snapdragon wearable CPU. So Snapdragon also makes CPUs, which based on their performance of their phones, I imagine aren't really the best in their class or probably don't compare to anything in an Apple watch. But if we're just talking about Wear OS, then they don't even reach the top of the line CPU when it comes to Snapdragon wearable technology. So you're getting dated hardware in an expensive build and a UI that was clearly not thought out at all. And it baffles me because how could a board, how could a team of designers look at this device and think it's okay and think it's acceptable or think it's a good idea? This should have been something like Gary brought up during a meeting and said, what if we put the physical hands on the screen? And someone went, oh, that'd be kind of interesting. Wait, no, that would cover up all the texts and the data and you couldn't ever see anything and there would be no way to get rid of it. That'd be a stupid idea. Oh, that's true. I didn't think about that. Never mind. Skip me. Skip me. That's how far that idea should have gone. And yet this went through R&D, this went through manufacturing, and now public release to the point that they still somehow don't see the issue with it. So what I see a lot of the time is when someone's text messages pop up, you've got this reply or this quick reply button at the bottom of the screen. If it's like 1030, then the minute hand is going to be covering up that option, meaning you have to press down the minute hand and the screen to respond. Or also if it's six o'clock and the hour hand is pointed straight down, I just... Uh... It, I don't get it. How can they not see how this is going to become a problem in the long run? So, oh, don't worry about it though. They understood that the hands might get a little bit intrusive. So instead of stopping with this idea and saying, yeah, you know what, minute our hands being on the, on the top of the glass, that's not a good idea. Instead they said, no worries, we'll just add a button, a button that will fix all of our problems. So the top of the device with the button on it, if you hold that down, it makes the watch hands go level. The hour and minute hands become balanced it still covers up content. I don't really see how stretching the hands across the screen to make things any better. But the worst part of it is it doesn't even toggle them to be like that. You have to keep holding that button or else they'll go back to the normal time. So anytime these hands are covering up something on the screen, you just have to hit this button and make them cover a different part of the screen. It's not like they're gone, they're still there. And oh my God, that UI just bothers the crap out of me. That's the single purpose of that one button is to just make the hands go level. That's all it does. Forcing your watch to be smart, but also have these rotating hands is confusing because some people like having digital watch faces that give them just the regular number. And that's how you end up with confusion like this, where you have a digital time on the watch face and the hands at a different time. So literally when you look at the watch at this position, you're kind of like, wait a second, what time is it? I don't know what time it is. Is it two o'clock? Is it 10 o'clock? You've literally done like the thing from Spy Kids where you've made a $450 fancy watch that can't even tell time. Also, when you're scrolling through the suite of apps you have on this device, you can't see what time it is because the hands have to lock in this specific way so that they can write text between the two hands that says this is the Play Store, this is messages, this is music. So you can't even see what time it is when you go to the home screen. I'm so lost 
on how anyone thought this was okay. But don't worry, before you start trying to defend this thing and act like the apple sheep's just being a little bit too hard on it, it gets much worse. It gets way, way worse. So flip this watch over and see what kind of health tracking activities you have with it. Does not even have a heart rate monitor. That's right, something that's been like in Galaxy phones for years, something that's been in every single Apple Watch that's ever come out, Series 0, Series 1, 2, 3, they all have heart rate monitors. And I'm fairly confident even Fitbits have heart rate monitors. Like $50 Fitbits are able to store a heart rate monitor just so you can track, is your heart beating really fast? Are there heart irregularities? Can you contact emergency services if you need to? Watches that are cheaper than this are able to do this no problem. Fitness trackers that cost a fraction of this LG W7 are able to do this, and yet they somehow couldn't figure out how to adopt a heart rate sensor into a $450 Wear OS watch at the end of 2018. How did they not figure that? I mean, I, mean, I hate to bring up the Apple Watch because that's such clearly better, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it. In 2018, we're getting wearable technology now that you can buy at a retail store that literally has EKG sensors built into it. You can get something that you used to only be able to get at a hospital on your wrist, FDA approved. That's what wearable technology is capable of doing now. And they couldn't even fit a heart rate monitor in a $450 premium Wear OS smartwatch. I'm absolutely lost on this because LG is not an incapable company. It's not like they're known for making terrible hardware, but their DAC audio systems and the LG phones are always top-notch quality. They make beautiful TVs and monitors. They manufacture the displays at the iPhone XS Max, which still looks great to me. So I'm still lost on how they thought this was a good idea or how this watch even came from the same design team. But nope, I'm not done yet. It gets worse. Also, you'll notice on the back of this watch, it's a giant metal plate. That means there's no inductive charging. They have to use the old method of five gold pins, which I remember seeing when I reviewed my Fitbit Blaze. The purpose of using pins instead of inductive charging, like you have on the Galaxy Watch or the Apple Watch, once again, since day one, the very, very earliest of these watches were able to charge inductively, which just means you have the charger, you have the back of the watch, doesn't really matter how you place it on there, you just clink, starts charging. As long as they're touching, it'll charge. Whereas the pins mean you have to rest the watch very, very carefully because if you don't get all five of those pins lined up, then the watch will not charge. You have to line them up exactly right and then let it click and then it'll start charging. The only reason companies ever used pins instead of inductive is to keep the cost low. Like I understood why they did that on the Fitbit, but that was because they were aiming to have a cheaper device. They were trying to keep affordability as a factor. So if you're going to use pins on a device, I get it if you want it to be cheap. If you're charging $450, I, I, I really don't know what the excuse is. You've got outdated hardware, you've got an average display, you've got an ugly looking design, no inductive charging, no heart rate sensor, and physical hands that are going to be interrupting the UI constantly no matter what. <laughs> How does this even come out? How is this possible? There are also nitpicky things that bother me about the watch too. Like there's more than five ticks in between each hour. So that means that you have all these ticks around the entire watch, but if the minute hand is pointing at one of the ticks, you're not able to go, okay, two, 10, and then add two. So it's two, 12. Because there's more ticks than five between each hour, it's just random. So the ticks actually don't help you at all. Also, the numbers are where the needles have to point for you to know the hour, not the lines on the side. So I just feel like even if this was a normal watch, it would be kind of ugly and harder to read the time than usual because they do weird things like 0, 01, 0, 02, 0, 03 all around the watch. Why add the zero? It's not a screen. That zero is never going to change. Why did you have to imprint zero, 01? It's just one. Just write one. I get it. They want it to all look the same. So they care about things being uniform and everything matching, right? So why did you put physical hands on top of the display covering up things constantly? I have to simply ask myself. I have to just simply step back and go, why not put them in the screen? Like, what's the disadvantage there? If you want the watch to always be telling time, just use an always on display, I guess. That would be a better reasoning. Lots of other Wear OS watches do that. Why the physical hands? There's so many cons to that and so little pros. If this watch was like $50, it would be sort of interesting, but the problem is they're charging for it like it's a premium smartwatch, but also advertising that it can be a normal watch that just tells time for up to 100 days. That's simply like stating that you should buy an iMac Pro and also we put an iPod emulator on it. So if you open this certain app, it'll give you like play, volume, and skip buttons like an iPod shuffle, and it can do that as well as run macOS. It's like, yeah, I don't 
care that it can also do iPod things. That's a, that's a given. Yeah, I don't care that the W7 can also be a normal watch. You do power reserve mode on an Apple watch, or I'm sure Galaxy watches have something similar. If you just need a watch to tell the time, even smart watches can do that for like a whole week. And if you're in a place where you cannot charge your watch for more than a week or two weeks, or as LG suggested, a hundred days, you're probably not too concerned with what time it is if you don't even have power where you are. Now, I have talked a lot about how confusing this watch is. I feel like most people out there are on the same page. There's not even that many fan droids out there trying to defend this. They're just saying, yeah, LG, I don't know what they were thinking. But um, I, I know I've said this a lot in this video, but it actually does get worse. I know you're all stopping it like, Drew, how could this possibly get any worse? How could this watch be even worse than you're describing? Well, um, LG has released watches before that are cheaper and have more features than this. That's right. The LG Watch Sport, for those of you who may have not known, back in February, oh no, 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 not 2018. I'm talking February 2017. LG released the LG Watch Sport, which started in at $350, a whole hundred dollars cheaper. Guess what this watch had? For one, thinner bezels, no physical hands interrupting the user interface. Flip it onto the back. You know what the craziest part is? It had inductive charging, not pins, and it had a heart rate monitor. Granted, it does look kind of ugly from the back. It's a very bulky watch, but my point is this thing was $100 cheaper, came out over a year ago, and had more features than this new LG W7, which just came out, costs more, lacks more, and has a more complicated user interface, and I... I I'm completely in shock of how this could exist. I thought it was a prank. I thought it was a joke. I thought it was something made by The Onion News or something like that. But nope, this thing is absolutely genuine. And somehow this guy at Engadget thought it was interesting and fascinating. I don't understand how someone can look at this and think it's cool. If you do think it's cool, please let me know why in the comments below. And don't tell me about the compass feature. We have compasses in our phones. And also we can put like a GPS in our watches now. You don't need to know north, south, east, west if the watch can literally tell you what street to turn on in fact if you advertise this thing with the google assistant isn't the google assistant able to like know where your home is and where work is and can't you just say hello google take me home give me directions to work or how is traffic if your selling point is compass literally something you could make with a needle cork and a puddle then it something went wrong you should buy this 450 dollars watch because it's really good at telling you which direction north is look at the freaking sun we're not exactly explorers going on boats that don't have GPS's built into them anymore. We're not looking at the stars to try to figure out which way the ship is going. Yeah, we're looking for a smartwatch that can read our text messages and help us get healthier. You can't even do that accurately. I'm not even sure how the health tracking works on the W7 without a heart rate monitor because when you work out, I think it's literally just based on how long the workout was. He ran for 10 minutes, therefore you burned this many calories. God, I, I, I am complete lost. You know what this probably is? I bet the Pixel team with all their weird marketing choices, decided that they would ship a Pixel watch, but call it an LG watch so that they could see how audiences responded to it. Because there's no way LG actually made this. They released that sport model over a year ago with more features and a cheaper price point. It even looked better design-wise. It was just more minimal. LG made that, okay? I can believe that. But there's no way the same hardware team designed the W7 and was completely okay with it. And the marketing team was like, yeah, sure, let's, let's sell this thing. Terrible watch, terrible product. No, I don't want to buy it and review it even if you think it'd be funny i'm i'm just not going to i just think that's embarrassing and you know like i know the apple watch is the number one watch and it's way better than wear os but the competition has to like try a little bit like they, they got to make some effort to compete with it it seems like they're intentionally trying to say that wear os is going to die like they they literally want to kill it i i can't i can't stand this anymore i'm gonna have to stop let me know what you guys think of the w7 in the comments below this is your alpc pure and i'll see you in the next one Oof.